وانفعنا بما علمتنا انك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم اني اعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين الحمد لله رب العالمين this week um, I don't know how it came to my mind. May Allah reward you. I think one of the emails I got or something that brought this idea that we need to talk about. These are, as we talked last week, this this is the holy month. And next week, next month will be even the holiest month and then one after. And one of the things we talked about last week is to do good deeds in these holy months. And the good deeds that we all know, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, when we talk about good deeds, we talk about fasting, we talk about salah, we talk about charity, we talk about going to hajj or umrah. These are all amazing. But I, it came to my mind that some people cannot do this, cannot do more than what they already can do for whatever the reason. Is there other things they can do which they are already doing, but they're not thinking this can be an act of worship, that can be an act of worship, and they will be rewarded much more in these blessed days. And that's how this came to my mind, that the using what Allah gave us in this earth, being the real stewards of the earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to be, is this is an act of worship? Am I going to be rewarded? For example, if I plant a tree, I like gardening, and I normally do it, but I never thought that it could be an act of worship. Is it really when I use less water when I am doing my wudu? Is it just because I don't want to waste or because I don't have enough water or I'm doing it because it's an act of worship that Allah will reward me? All these things, and everyone is now talking about it, how you save the resources for the earth, the green movement, all these things. SubhanAllah, it is engraved in our deed. And this is why in the flyer, maybe as most of you got it, that I put this ayah. It's in Surah Al-Baqarah, the verse, Ya ayuha al-nas, kulu mimma fi al-ardi halalan, tayyiba, wa la tattabi'u khutawati al-shaytan, innahu lakum aduun mudin. People, everybody, all human beings, all mankind, eat, that's an order, eat. So when I eat with the right intention and the right food, it's an act of ibadah, it's an act of worship. Kulu, eat, mimma fi al-ardi, everything that's in this earth, with two conditions. And this is what I'm, after this, I will leave it to, to Amina to explain to you. Halalan tayyiba. Halal, lawful. And almost everything Allah put in on this earth is lawful. The essence of this deen is everything is lawful. Except what Allah said, it's unlawful. So when I look, what should I eat? The answer is very easy. Go to Surah Al-Ma'idah. I, I think number five, and Allah will tell you what is the haram, and you can count them on your fingers. So halal is the lawful. Tayyib is what we're going to talk about today. Tayyib, translation of tayyib is a lot of translation. It's pure, it's healthy, it's beneficial, it's pleasant. All these, anything that's halal, that is beneficial to my body, that's what Allah wants me to eat. So if something is halal, lawful, but it's harmful to my body, that's I should not do it. Not because the physician told me. It's because Allah told me. And this is what I'm going to go and leave it here to Amina because she's going to talk about way more than just food. She's going to talk about the food, about planting, about animals, about not wasting. May Allah put barakah in the time, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And I will leave it to you. So I would love to learn. And if you don't mind, I'm going to sit so I can see also the slide. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. On? Or is it catching? Yeah. Testing there? Okay. Is that better? Is this working? Do you want me to say something? Does that work? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. 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 Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. We send um, peace and blessings on our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, um, salam alaykum everyone. So I, um, I just want to start by saying I'm not 
a scholar of the Dean and I'm not a scholar in sustainability. This is just information that I've learned and accumulated over the past 12 years slowly. Um, so it may seem overwhelming, but I'd like you to just take one or two things and see if you can implement them into your life and then ask Allah to make it easy and inshallah, you'll be able to grow from there. Inshallah, is the sound working okay now? Okay. All right, so um, I do want to start with a little bit of background information. Um, I, I'm going to try to make it brief so that we can get to the actionable items and, and things that you can we can implement into our lives. Um, but I'm sure you've all heard of climate change, global warming, um, and something that is talked about a lot is CO2 or carbon dioxide. So the greenhouse effect is actually a good thing. Um, it's what makes our Earth comfortable and habitable for us. So these gases like carbon dioxide and methane, they trap some of the sun's heat once it enters the atmosphere so that it doesn't just deflect back out into space. So that's what, what keeps us relatively warm throughout the year. Uh, the problem is that now we are emitting excessive amounts of carbon into the atmosphere and it's trapping more and more of the sun's heat. And that's when, when we're talking about <clears throat> global warming, that's kind of what we're talking about. So more and more carbon is stuck in the atmosphere and it's trapping more and more heat. And so that's melting, you know, ice caps and all of that. So methane is one of the greenhouse gases. It's 30 times more potent, oops, I'm sorry. It's 30 times more potent than um, carbon dioxide. And um, it comes from the anaerobic breakdown of food waste and also from livestock, just from the natural gases that are, you know, come out of animals' bodies. Uh, carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse, ga greenhouse gas emissions uh, that come from any person or company or country. And then a carbon offset is the reduction in emissions to compensate for a carbon footprint. So for example, if you plant trees to help make up for uh, the emissions from your car, that would be a carbon offset. This I only want to bring up because uh, it was yesterday. It's called Earth Overshoot Day. And what I'd like to draw attention to is the line that says, humanity is currently consuming nature 1.75 times faster than the planet can regenerate. So what that means is yesterday, we consumed an entire year's worth of natural resources. If you, if you kind of extrapolate this to a bank account, it would be like spending money 1.75 times faster than you're making it, which eventually will be a problem for you. Okay, and then just a couple themes that I'd, I'd like to talk about. Um, energy, we get most of our energy from coal, natural gas, and oil. Uh, coal and natural gas make up most of our electricity production. Uh, it contributes to 28% of our country's emissions. Um, transportation, which is generally petroleum or oil-based, that makes up about 29% of US emissions. Um, plastic, a lot of people don't know this, but plastic comes from oil, it comes from petroleum, um, and it has some chemicals added to it. It's become pervasive in every part of our lives. And now what's kind of amazing is that we're finding microplastics in seafood, we're finding it in our soil, we're finding it in our tap water even, and we're finding it in human feces. Uh, so plastic has really permeated every aspect of our lives. Another important theme um, that is also important in our Dean that has been mentioned is animal welfare. So the increased consumption in the past 50 or 60 years of meat has led to um, these, these institutions called CAFOs, the C-A-F-O. It's concentrated animal feeding operations. So they're basically big factories that have um, animals, whether they're cattle or, or pigs or chicken, um, they're contained in a very, very small space and they're oftentimes not exposed to light they're not treated very well, they're living in their own excrement. Um, 
and I'll, I'll show you a picture in a little, in a minute. Um, some other animal welfare issues are illegal poaching, trophy hunting, um, and something that I love about our dean is that it teaches us to treat animals with dignity. And even when we're consuming animals, the Zabiha process requires a very sharp knife, a very swift death to the animal. The animal cannot even see other animals being slaughtered. It's, it's as humane as uh, slaughter can be. Um, next. I'd like to talk about farming and livestock, or rainforest, I'm sorry. So forests in general um, are carbon sinks. So what that means is uh, trees, we know that, I think most people know that trees breathe in carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen. So we get oxygen from trees. Forests offset 11% of our emissions in the country. So they're taking in 11% of the, the CO2 that we're putting out. When we, when we have deforestation, so when we cut down trees, we're releasing all the carbon dioxide that they store. Rainforests also contribute to 25% of the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. And forests also filter water for us. Um, deforestation endangers animal and plant species. Um, and uh, we're currently destroying rainforests all over the world. Uh, in South America, deforestation is being done to grow cattle or to raise cattle. So um, trees are being cut down so that they can make land for cattle to be raised for our consumption. So we get a lot of our beef from Brazil and, and other countries. In Malaysia and Indonesia, some uh, pristine rainforest is being cut down and it's in order to grow palm oil. So it's palm fruit trees. And um, I'll talk about that later. Farming, farming is uh, kind of a big, a, a big contributor in a few different ways. One is that uh, conventional farming uses pesticides. And in particular, one pesticide, which is still legal in the United States is glyphosate. And it is a known carcinogen, which is a, a cancer-causing agent. So um, we have we have uh, glyphosate, which leaches into our water, which uh, fish, you know, swim in that water. It's it's everything is very connected. So that's one thing that I'd like everyone to get out of this is that all of our systems on the Earth are connected to each other. Globally, livestock contribute to 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, all right, something that we see in um, our waterways. So this summer, we've had a lot of flash flooding. And something that you see in, in, those, in those times is that the water will uh, wash a lot of trash into the rivers. And then those rivers funnel into the oceans. And then that's how we get things like the um, Great Pacific Garbage Patch and these huge floating islands of plastic in the ocean. One of the amazing things about the ocean is that the oceans absorb a lot of the CO2 in the atmosphere, which is a normal part of the, the process of carbon dioxide and oxygen cycle. Because there's so much CO2 in the ocean, it's causing the oceans to become more acidic, which makes it very difficult for marine life to survive. And because the waters are also getting warmer, it's leading to coral bleaching, which is, I'm sure you've heard, like coral reefs house a lot of wildlife, which are usually lower on the um, food chain and feeds larger and larger animals. So once these small animals are depleted, or once they're gone, then we see fewer and fewer larger animals. And some of those, some of these things are things that we fish. Finally, I'd like to talk about fashion. So the apparel and footwear industry contribute 8% of global emissions. An interesting fact I found is that it takes 2,700 liters of water to create one cotton t-shirt. 
So that's throughout the whole process of production from growing the cotton to on your back. So that's to give you some an idea of how much that is. That's enough water for one person to drink for 2.5 years. Another interesting fact is that cotton only makes up 2% of global agricultural land, but it ranks third in the use of pesticides after corn and soybeans. So now I just want to show you some pictures. Um, these kind of show extreme weather patterns that we've been seeing. Even this year, I'm sure we all felt the heat wave last, last week, and there have been records broken in Europe where there, most people don't have central air conditioning there. Um, you may have seen pictures of people like kind of in the, like, like the Eiffel Tower, like kind of like splashing around like in the pool there. Um, we're seeing more intense hurricanes in places that we didn't used to see them. We're seeing more forest fires and we're seeing forest fires in places where we didn't used to see them, including parts of Europe. And this is uh, some of our effects on animals. Um, the top left picture is an unconscious orangutan that was being rescued from uh, a rainforest that was being deforested for palm oil. The middle picture is a beached whale that they later, um, they kind of did an autopsy on it and they found plastic cups and plastic bags in its stomach. It couldn't eat anymore. They eventually starve because they can't digest food, the, especially the plastic bags get stuck in there. The bottom picture is a sea turtle and it has a plastic straw stuck in its nostril. These are all things that, that we are doing. This is a direct correlation between our actions and these animals suffering. These are CAFOs, what I was talking about earlier. So an interesting and disgusting byproduct of CAFOs is when you have so many animals in such a confined space, you have an enormous amount of excrement to deal with. So they have these things where the arrows are in that picture. They're lagoons. So they're waste lagoons. And what that means is all of the waste from the animals gets put into there with water. What they do is they use it as irrigation for their land. So they're spraying, they're aerosolizing excrement into the air and people who live in these areas are having serious health problems, asthma and other issues because they're inhaling fecal matter. Uh, this is, the top left picture is part of the uh, Pacific garbage patch. Uh, and there's a diver in there trying to clean up some of it. The bottom right picture is a beach in Australia. Okay, now finally I'd like to get to some actions. Um, so the first thing I would like to suggest is that we eat more vegetables and eat less meat. So whenever possible, eating local is the best option because your food travels less, which means it has less of a carbon footprint, which we discussed earlier. Um, there's uh, a statistic by an organization called Meatless Monday. And they say that over the course of a year, if you skip meat and cheese, one day a week with your family, it would be the equivalent of taking your car off the road for five weeks or reducing everyone's daily showers by three minutes. If the entire country did not eat meat or cheese for just one day a week, it would be the equivalent of not driving 91 billion miles or taking 7.6 million cars off the road. So my suggestion is if um, if you eat the biha only, um, or if you don't eat the biha only, I would suggest choosing it, or if not, at least choosing organic or even kosher meat, um, because there are more restrictions on those types of meat. Those these animals are not allowed to come from CAFOs to get to get that certification. They can't come from there. Um, so um, the biha or organic or kosher. All of those things, um, when you do eat meat, which we're trying to reduce, um, those will help you uh, decrease the amount of the, um, the demand on the CAFOs. Uh, 
Um, another interesting statistic is that a hamburger takes 630 gallons of water to produce. I think that's amazing. <laughs> okay, the second action is, and this is a big one, this is generally de decreasing our consumption and decreasing our waste. So most things are packaged in plastic. So whenever possible, try to find an option that is either glass or um, in metal or in paperboard, things that are recyclable. Um, and whenever possible, buy in the bulk aisle. That's an example of like the bulk section. Some grocery stores will let you bring your own bags like this that you can um, that you can fill up in the bulk section. Rice or lentils, um, oats. Um, these are some more examples of reusable items that you can use for hot things, cold things. Um, this is a container that we keep in our car for leftovers when we go to a restaurant. These are utensils that I keep in my purse. Um, if we ever go to a restaurant that serves out of like plastic utensils or if we go to someone's house and they're serving out of with plastic utensils, we just use these and take them home and wash them. Um, this is, oops, sorry. This is also, um, this is a deodorant I use. <laughs> um, it's, it's not perfect because the cap is still plastic and there's a little plastic applicator in it, but um, it's a glass jar. Uh, so, oh, grocery bags too. I think most people have those. Some other things you can do are carpooling. Um, I know in West County, it's harder to do public transportation. There's not a whole lot of access to it. Um, eating at home or when you want to eat out, eat in the restaurant instead of taking out because you, you're you gonna avoid the take home containers. Um, as much as possible, avoid single use plastic and styrofoam. And something that um, many people don't know is that styrofoam is not recyclable. It does have the triangle at the bottom, but it is not a recyclable plastic. The the Triangles on the bottom with the chasing arrows, they just tell you what kind of plastic, um, what kind of plastic that item was made out of. So generally the kinds of plastic that are recyclable are one, two, and five, I believe. Anything else, you should either contact your municipal waste or waste company um, or throw it away. When you're in doubt, you should throw it away because uh, something non-recyclable can contaminate an entire load of recycling. Uh, here are some more things that you can do to decrease your waste. Um, I showed you some um, personal care items, deodorant. Uh, there are lotions and shampoo. There are shampoos you can get that are bars. Um, they lather up just like a shampoo, um, but it's a bar and it'll completely disappear when you're done with it. There's no packaging. Um, there's uh, shampoos and there's also there's lotions and conditioners that you can get in refillable bottles that you can order online. You send it back when they're done and they will send you a new one. There's one company that I know of called Plain Products. Um, we use their lotion um, and it's great. It's a whole cycle. Like you send it back, there's zero waste in the whole process. The top left, those are paper towels. Those are reusable paper towels. You throw them in the wash when you're done and then you can roll them up again. So it's still kind of like a normal paper towel. Um, the two middle items are actually feminine hygiene products. So um, there's reusable pads and there's something called a, like a menstrual cup that you can insert and um, empty into the toilet and rinse out and you just boil it at the end of um, your period. There's also, I didn't include a picture, but there's um, underwear that has like a lining in it that you can wash. It's the company that I know of is called Thinx, T-H-I-N-X. Um, it's, you just wear it with nothing else and you can wear it the whole day. You throw it in the wash, let it air dry. Uh, something else you can do is shopping for secondhand clothing, which I know in our community and also in general can be stigmatized. We think of secondhand clothing kind of as for people who can't afford um, buying new clothes, but Shopping secondhand is a great way to de decrease your carbon footprint. And uh, 
The bottom right is a graphic that uh, St. Louis City Recycling and um, there's, there's a project between the city and the county and they're trying to make recycling simplified for everyone. And so they're telling people to stick with these six items, paper, cardboard, plastic bottles and containers, glass, uh, metal food, and food and beverage cartons. So if it doesn't fall into one of those categories, it's better to throw it in the garbage. And this also falls into the category of decreasing our, our waste. With the caveat, I would say, don't waste food. I, I think composting is not an easy way out of like throwing away food that you just don't feel like finishing. Um, this is a, a last resort for things that are too far gone for you to eat or parts of, parts of food that you can't eat, like bones, nutshells, eggshells. Um, so composting at home is always an option. There are, you can, you can search online, there are services that will come and pick up your compost for a fee. Um, the reason why it's so important not to throw food scraps in the garbage is because we think that, oh, it's food, it's gonna break down eventually, right? Like if you throw a banana peel in your yard, it'll be gone after a few weeks or a few months. But if you throw a banana peel in the garbage, it will, you will be able to excavate it, dig it out, and it'll be exactly the same way it was a year later. And the reason for that is because they compress, because we have such limited space for landfills, they compress everything like this huge like bulldozer, they compress everything and these things don't get oxygen to help them break down. So as they do break down slowly, they go into anaerobic respiration and they, they um, emit methane, which as I mentioned earlier, is 30 times worse than carbon dioxide. So when you're throwing any kind of food item in the garbage, it's, it's actually terrible. As much as possible, try not to waste food at all. And if you have to, try to find a way to compost it. The third action is being efficient with your energy and trying to utilize alternative energy. And this is really cool. Ameren offers something called Pure Power. All you have to do is call them and sign up for it. They, every time, um, they'll, they'll match your um, electricity bill, but instead of your power coming from coal, which most of Missouri power comes from coal, um, they'll put uh, wind energy into the grid. As much electricity, it's a little complicated, as much electricity as you used, they put that much in wind credits into the grid. And so it essentially cancels out the amount of coal that you used by introducing um, renewable energy into the grid. There's another company called Arcadia Power. I don't know a lot about this program, but it is available in St. Louis County. Um, you just sign up online and it's not just wind, it's wind and solar and I'm not sure what else, there's a third one. Um, there are also some, some like HVAC companies in St. Louis that will set up geothermal energy for you in your home, which is very expensive to set up, but it usually pays itself off after eight or nine years. I don't know the science behind it very well, but it uses the energy from the earth to heat your home, but also to cool your home. There's solar panels. Um, they're expensive right now, but they're starting to get cheaper and cheaper as more and more people are buying them. Um, this is, this is a really cool way to get yourself off the grid completely. And in some instances, they will pay you credits if you are producing more solar energy than you're consuming. It'll go into the grid. Um, I mentioned carpooling and public transportation. There's also hybrid and electric cars. A lot of experts say that vehicles are going towards electric. The future is electric. Um, there's the caveat that elect our electricity comes from coal, so it's not completely clean energy that you're powering your car with. It's still better than um, gas. So. The fourth action is spending time outdoors. And there are studies that show that just being outside in nature is good for our mental health. It's also good for our physical health. 
Um, and from a spiritual perspective, it helps us develop gratitude. It helps us appreciate Allah's creation and the beauty that he's put in the earth. Um, and gardening is something if you don't do, just try it. It's okay if you fail, you'll get it eventually. I'm still failing. Um, it can be therapeutic, but it also reminds us, um, Dr. Hafa mentioned this once, it reminds us where we came from and where we're gonna end up in the soil. So it can be a really good reality check and it can help keep us humble. Um, there's something that, it, it's a movement that started in Japan called forest bathing. And it's really catching on here, especially um, with people who are very much into um, like meditation and mindfulness. Um, you disconnect, you don't look at your phone, you go into the forest and you just sit or stand and you just kind of meditate. You sort of look um, at what's around you and just be in your element and just be conscious of where you are. Uh, you don't have to go to a forest. You can go to the Missouri Botanical Garden also. And admission there or membership there supports some really good work that they're doing in sustainability. So you don't have to don't read all of that. It's just to show you that there are a lot of different names for palm oil when you read the labels on things that you're buying. So palm oil, um, it's in peanut butter. It's in shampoo. It's in your skincare products. It's in chocolate, um, it's in lipstick sometimes, it's in ramen noodles. Um, so just be aware of um, this as an ingredient whenever you purchase something. There are alternatives to palm oil. There are alternatives of every type to palm oil. Um, but I would like to say that even when you see this symbol, RSPO means responsibly sourced palm oil, I would still, strongly urge you to avoid it. And that's because it's not a very well, um, it's, uh, it's not well regulated. And so a company can be using some RSPO, but it can mix it with conventional RSPO. Um, and there's really no oversight. So, um, and you're still creating a demand for palm oil. Um, it's best to avoid it altogether. And, and back to the reason why we avoid palm oil is because it's, cutting down rainforests and rainforests are our carbon sinks and they are our source one of our sources for oxygen um, and also biodiversity um, the, the entire world's population of orangutans are just on two islands and both of those islands are being deforested for palm oil production so I, that's just one example but there are lots of animals um, that are losing their homes and their lives um, because of our demand and hunger for these items. Uh, the sixth action is conserving water. So even in wudu, and um, I'm sure Dr. Haifa can mention this hadith, but there is a hadith about um, being excessive even with wudu. There is a sahabi who is making wudu in a stream or a river, and um, the Prophet ﷺ told him that there is excess even in when there's that much water even with wudu there's excess so um conserving water when you're making wudu turning it off between each um each action it also helps to be more mindful of your actions when you're being so deliberate brushing your teeth don't run the water i mean just you know whenever you're not actively using water turn off the faucet same with doing dishes if you're not actively using the water just turn off the faucet um, that's a rain barrel in the middle. Um, it's a really great way to, to harness just nature, like natural rain. Um, it saves the water in there, and then it has a spigot at the bottom, and you can attach your hose and water your garden or your grass from that. Uh, so even though the majority of the earth, the earth is covered with water, only 2.5% of the water is fresh water. And even then, only 1% of that is accessible because most of it is ice or glaciers. So water scarcity is possibly the biggest crisis that's coming, um, that's going to affect humans in the coming years. The seventh action is taking, doing cleanups. So um, there's 
there, there in Missouri, there are several organizations that do river cleanups. And if you ever want to volunteer with them, it's easy to just search online for river cleanups. Um, particularly now, like with the flooding and stuff, so much trash has found its way into the rivers. Um, there's uh, also beach cleanups. This is a really remarkable example of um, group effort in cleaning up a beach. This is a beach in Mumbai in India. And over the course of 30 months, uh, volunteers, constant volunteers, cleaned up this beach, Versova Beach. And something they saw after they cleaned it up was that sea turtles came back and laid eggs there, which had not happened in over 20 years. Unfortunately, um, I also read that the trash has started accumulating there again. Um, and the reason is because there are a few canals that people are throwing trash into that kind of exit there. There's neighborhood cleanups you can organize with your neighbors or by yourself or with your family. Um, I don't know if everyone knows this, but the Mustard actually, actually sponsors a, uh, a length of highway on 44 and every once in a while they do highway cleanups there. And I think they send out announcements when they do them. It's really hard to take responsibility for other people's trash. You walk past it and it's like, oh, I can't believe someone threw that. And while that's a good thought to have, it doesn't take a lot of effort to just pick it up and throw it away. It's, it's hard because it, you didn't do it. Um, but I've found that it's a good lesson in humility. <laughs> And I think it's healthy for our nests sometimes to do things like that. Um, we're not above anything. So um, the final item is beware of greenwashing. And this is, this is really hard because companies that are not sustainable companies, they use language and they use packaging and they use colors and designs to make you feel like um, buying, purchasing their product is an eco-friendly option. And here's an example, this Ziploc bag, it's still a plastic bag. Okay, fine, they use 25% less plastic, but it's still plastic. Um, there are still alternatives that you can use that are not plastic. Same with bottled water. Bottled water is something that should definitely be avoided as much as possible. But this company, Fiji's trying to make you feel like your purchase is helping offset greenhouse gas emissions. But really what you should do is take, take your own container and fill it up in a drinking fountain. So um, some language that is used to greenwash is chemical free, earth friendly, non-toxic, certified green, eco, bio, and natural. Like natural is a big one. You see all natural. That has no legal implication. Anyone can say their product is all natural and doesn't mean that it is. So those are kind of the big um, takeaways. This is just a recap of the, um, the items that I mentioned. Um, just a final thought. This is a quote that I love. It says, we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. So just do what you can. Take one or two things that you can easily do. Um, and if we do it for the sake of pleasing Allah, inshallah, he'll make it easy. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me at any time. Um, and also when you go home, like you can do, you can search these topics more in depth. I'm not an expert, um, but one thing you can look up is zero waste and you'll find so many ideas on things that you can do at home to help you decrease your waste. So that's it. It's beautiful. Yeah, okay. yeah, go ahead. Because I just wanted to, after you finish, I'll just ask. My Yes. So I know in West Africa and also in Indonesia and Malaysia, it's consumed by the local people and people um, who are indigenous to those lands also, it's just part of their way of life. The problem is that the, it's a very cheaply harvested, easily grown crop. And so there is a global demand for it. And because it's so cheap, 
companies are putting it in everything, even like lipstick, like things you wouldn't even think of. Um, so if we decrease the demand for it, they won't be cutting down, they're cutting down natural rainforests, places that there are indigenous people who live in those rainforests, they're being moved out of their homes so they can cut down the rainforest so that they can completely level it and grow palm fruit trees. There's nothing wrong with the product itself. It's more about um, the greed that has caused the deforestation of rainforests. And that's more what it is. There's a, it's more about us as American citizens buying Nutella, which has palm oil, which is recently um, RSPO certified. Like we don't need palm oil here. We really don't need it. There are alternatives. They're just more expensive for companies to use. So if we can tell companies that we don't want them to use palm oil, that we want them to use sustainable alternatives, like the problem will diminish, inshallah, if we can, if we can do that. But I totally understand like people who are native to those areas, they use it because it's part of their life. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just, it, it doesn't need to be in everything here in America. I don't need my lotion to have palm oil in it. You know, I don't need um, my peanut butter to have palm oil in it. I, you can just grind peanuts and they naturally have an oil in them. So um, that's what it's about. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, th there are a lot of other vegetable oils. So like you get from the grocery store, normally vegetable oil, canola oil, like these things. Sometimes vegetable oil has palm oil in it too. You have to look at the ingredients. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, there, there, are, there are vegan alternatives to palm oil that, that don't have animal products in them. Expense. It was expensive for people, and now it's very affordable for everyone. Just if I can share with you a couple of, it's amazing, it's beautiful. It's not too hard to do what she said. Um, actually, after I met Amina, I started a little bit of change in my life. And I can tell you, just quickly, I started doing compost in my home. I had no idea what it means. May Allah reward her, and then I uh, researched it. Literally now, my garbage is instead of every week, it's every other week. You know, when we put our garbage outside, we always did our garbage outside. Now it's every other week. And alhamdulillah, and I do gardening and I can use whatever is happening into my yard. But I want to share a couple of hadiths about what she, the points she gave you. Number one, less meat. There's a hadith of Rasulullah says the following. Completely opposite what we are doing. He said, number one, alaykum bi alban al baqar. Take or drink or use the um, dairy products of the cow. Why? Because the fat in it, Allah
So the hadith of Rasulullah sallam the meaning of use the dairy products of the cattle alaykum bi alban al baqar actually specifically the cow and then he said the following why their fat is actually a cure and their oil is a medicine and their meat is a disease mm. exactly opposite what we learned now they've changed now go back to full fat don't do low fat I'm sure you've all read about this. Mm -hmm. so this is number one. Number two, I'm just taking some of the points you put. Waste. There is two places in the Quran where Allah says, Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Two places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't waste. He does not like those who are wasteful. Only two places. Go and look it up. Both related to food. Both are related to food. It's not anything else. Kulu wa shrabu. Ya bani adam. Khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. This is in Surah Al-A'raf. Oh, people, children of Adam, dress beautifully when you're going to the masjid or when you're coming to salah. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا Eat and drink. وَلَا تَسْرِفُوا Don't waste. And waste is exactly, wudu, I call it the flood zone. <laughs> Have you seen it? We should put the yellow sign upstairs, right? And I'm not talking about children. I'm talking about us, adults, women, come to the masjid frequently. It's just something we're not paying attention. And I'm sure if we pay attention to it, we can do it easily. It becomes a habit. With, with turning off the faucet, with every movement, I tried it in my home. And I put a container under as I am doing wudu. With turning it, every time I'm not using the water, the container was full. The whole bowl. So when you do it, do it as a ibadah. Do it as an, this is what I started my talk saying to you. Do these things as act of worship. You'll get rewarded, especially in these blessed days and months. It's an act of worship. When I turn off the water, it's an act of worship. When I use the bottle, instead, it's an act of worship. Allahu Akbar. Let's go for the salam. May Allah accept from us. Jazakillah khayyam.